I get that um, that obviously you are currently out in Australia and I'm in the UK at the moment. So there is a, a bit of a time difference. So we will get straight into it. Um, I've had questions from guys certainly based around uh, the struggles that they have with texting. And I thought the best person that I could end up speaking to uh, about it would be yourself, uh, especially as you have your own uh, book called the Texting Ladder, if I'm if I'm correct. The texting book. Um, yeah. The texting book, um, uh, which we'll we'll go over in in a second anyway. But one of the things that I really love with the dating industry is that is there is just so many different choices of like methods and levels for guys that if they are complete beginners, if they're incredibly anxious with doing something then there are methods that they can that are incredibly simplified and they can do things step by step and you know and then there are other methods that are certainly more complicated or more advanced uh depending on like where someone's uh uh, uh social life or social anxiety can be and one of the things that i think i i really love with uh your texting book is the fact that you have these uh this like step by step guide to how to actually text someone and build it up from there until you can get them out on a date. Okay. So I suppose just first of all, to get things going, what I'd love to hear is just a little bit more about the book. Um, so then guys can get an idea of, you know, how it works and how it's applicable to them. And then hopefully how they can incorporate it into their own uh, dating routine. Yeah, no worries. No, thanks, Dan. Um, well, yeah, I mean, the book is titled Texting Women phone number to date every time and so the purpose of it is once you've got a phone number to get a date um, and obviously there's that that process that bridge which is texting you you have to text and message to to get there and um, a lot of guys I've known it's been a real gap in their knowledge or they're becoming wise with learning cold approach or just trying to be better as a guy and want to improve their skill sets and this is an area of deficiency I know a lot of guys initially might not take it too seriously but once they've got a girl's phone number that they really want to go out with then it becomes quite serious <laughs> like oh i really want to get this right and you know not make a mistake or be needy and, and stuff like that so um yeah so wrote the texting book back in 2020 and the process the texting ladder was in my head for about eight nine years um and then yeah wrote it during lockdown um and then dan helped me launch it which was great so thank you very much dan um and yeah it's it's done really well since like sold thousands of copies all over the world in print and ebook wow um and it's the the, the purpose of texting and I, I do say this in the book is texting is a means to go on dates with women and i think that mindset is quite helpful for a lot of guys because there's just so much on social media about you know what to write to women or to text them this about your life and stuff and there isn't actually an objective about texting other than just staying in touch and messaging. And and for me, texting is a means to an end. It is from point A to point B. We're not there to talk about our life story or to ask her about what she liked about her best friend or what her beliefs are morally or anything like that. It's, it's quite simple in that it is from getting a phone number. We want to go on dates. That is the purpose of texting women. Um, and that, and it, and it is quite, straightforward in, in that sense um and that's that's kind of the key the key mindset that is in is in the book and then obviously all the the help the process and all the messages you can copy and paste um that that mindset helps a lot i find with guys um because now they know that they're not there to just endlessly text and chat and message away and it's also quite masculine because with that mindset and the messages and the what is in the book it's it's masculine because it's quite minimalistic it's it's direct um, and you're not writing your life story. It's, it's quite punchy and you're just going for a date. And again, I'm sure maybe you've been out with women in bars and stuff and they'll bemoan the fact that they're chatting to guys, but they don't get asked out. Yeah, And yeah, I yeah. just find that, find that so strange. It's like they're, they're just like floaters, like floating guys and like, oh, he's always messaging me and chatting away, but he hasn't actually asked me out yet. I don't know what's going on. So with the, uh, with the texting book, that, that isn't going to happen. Yeah, but isn't it interesting that you get guys think that they have to carry on having like loads and loads of conversations with someone rather than just getting to the point and saying, well, look, 
I, I like you, you like me, let's go on a date, let's just see what happens. And instead, they're like trying to build up this, I suppose, almost like a friendship through uh, through yeah. the, the texting, like as if they're pen pals. Um, but then, like, it, I think it almost kills the vibe from just texting someone too long uh, and not just trying to get them out and, and meet someone in person. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and I think the the kind of next thinking point that viewers might be having is, oh, we you know that's all well and good, but what about all the problems that happen over texting? And, and that is certainly addressed in, in the book. So for example, um, tests, tests that women throw your way over message, um, especially if they are in demand with other men. Um, it, it, sometimes the texting isn't going to be that straightforward. And so the book covers tests, um, you know, the use of audio messages, um, pictures, videos, broadcast lists, phone calls even, um, vacuuming, which is where you go quiet because you've either made a mistake or she's not behaving as you would like and causing a bit of trouble. Yeah. Um, I, I, like the, I like ghosted. the name of that. I like the name of that. So so, uh, <laughs> so, me, so me and my brother, funny story. So our version uh, of that, we called that airtime. Uh, if, <laughs> if if either we said something uh, uh, in error when we were texting or if the girl said something that we weren't happy with. Uh, I mean, my brother's married now anyway, and he's having a baby. But um, but when he was single and, and he was doing it, um, yeah, if uh, if a girl texted him a message um, that he didn't like, he would be like, right, I'm giving her airtime. Um, I'm, I'm not responding for a couple of hours. And then every time there, there was like another error that she said, the, the time got longer uh, and of course, then it just sort of changed this investment that she just wanted to yeah. like, like uh, appease him that much quicker. So I got that, I got that idea at least off of my brother years back. But uh, I like this title of a uh, of vacuuming. That's that's quite, yeah. that's quite a, quite a quirky one. It is, it is very effective, and a lot of guys don't do that because it just comes from our drive. I think as as men to chase to feel that we have to do stuff to get a girl to go out with us and vacuuming is com the complete opposite and, and when i've spoken to guys face to face and helping them with their texting and saying right you need to vacuum it's it's almost like horror like i i can't not text her or but she'll just disappear and, and if there is any interest there um it, it 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 she will she will come back um and that, that, that creating the vacuum for her to to step forward and and show that investment and and the number one thing that women want from us is, is attention and so when you withdraw that, it, it can be quite powerful. And, and especially when they're really attractive or they get a lot of um, messages or they're texting many men or on Instagram or whatever. If you're the one that is a credible offer and you're not texting her, that's the one that she pays attention to. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Okay, well, let I'd, I'd love to kind of hear more uh, about some of the first few steps uh, of the book. And then definitely, if guys are interested, they can absolutely check it out. But we'll we'll go over a bit more of how to find David's book uh, at the end of this. So I'd love then, David, for you to kind of walk me through the first step. So if we were to set the scene here, and you've got you've you've taken a guy out who's been coaching with you, He's stopped a girl. He's had a great interaction. He's got a phone number. He's then uh, come back to you and he's like, David, I got a number. What what, what do I do next? Uh, I suppose first thing I am curious about is how soon should a guy text uh, a woman after he gets the number? And then, yeah. uh, and then what is that first step um, uh, in the ladder that guys then need to do to get the ball rolling? Sure. Well, I'll share my screen and yeah, yeah, oh. go for it. <laughs> it says oh, host disabled participant screen sharing. <laughs> okay, hang on. Uh, there we go. Try that now. That that should hopefully work. Okay. Uh, so if I do this, does that work for you? I think I think it's loading. I saw something. Oh, hang on. Share. Yep. There we go. Oh wow. Okay. okay. Is that working? Yeah, so I've uh, I've got the texting ladder diagram, uh, the Tower of Love. Uh, interesting. Okay, yeah, you can you'll definitely have to explain that one. <laughs> uh, we've got snakes that say no reply silence. Interesting, yeah. and then we've got uh, what looks like uh, one, two, three, five steps uh, up the ladder, and then lots of she replies. So so walk me through the diagram, and then and then through uh, those first steps. 
Sure. Can you see my cursor as well? Or? Uh, yeah, I can, yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this is the text and letter. So, yeah, five-step process from getting the phone number down here to getting a date. Um, and it's like snakes and ladders. That was the purpose of it. So if it all goes well, you go up the ladder and then you book him for a date. And if anything goes wrong, which is basically she doesn't reply to you or gives you silence, then you slide back down. So um, the the kind of preliminary step, if you are approaching face-to-face, -face, cold approaching, and you get a phone number, this is like the preliminary step, which is the street ping. So that's basically where you get a phone number um, there and then, and you text the girl there and then just like a hey, just to make sure that the number works. Um, but if it's just like normal life, you're not approaching, but you somehow get a number at an event or a function or a bar, then um, after a few hours, that's what I advise after a few hours. So um, say you've been out on your lunch break or you met a nice girl after work, um, a couple of hours later, two to three hours, I would say, sending step one, the opener, which is actually very easy. I give loads of examples that you can copy and paste into the book, but something like, hey, and then the girl's name, mm. um, spontaneous meeting you or nice to meet you. You seemed fun or you seemed friendly and then your name. Um, and that's it. I'm not asking questions. I'm not saying, do you remember me? I'm the guy in the, the yellow shirt with the purple feathered hat. Um, it, it, it is some, it's, it's a feeler for investment and that's it. Yeah. Um, and then I would be expecting her to reply quite quickly. Um, and if she does, then we're up to step two, build up. And so this is quite a key step because um, when a guy is in this place, when they've got the opener done, most guys, again, will just want to ask them out straight away because they can't wait. They're not patient. They're very attracted to the girl. But this is really, really key. We actually go down a different route, which is we build up the texting conversation. And so what this is, is it's actually quite a subtle signal of high value in that you are not needy, you're, you can handle the tension and you don't need to ask her out straight away. You can just be a normal person and just chat over a few messages. And that's why there's a gap here is because we typically send between one to three messages. And so a build-up message would be something like, um, you know, um, it might be the next day and you might say, oh, um, I'm having a great day at work. Uh, I've just delivered a pitch to the exec and I've got some funding for my project. Um, I'm now going out for lunch with friends and then I'm going to smash the gym later. Um, how about you? And so what that is, is you're giving her an insight into your world because again, needy guys, they don't say anything about themselves because it's not very attractive. <laughs> they just ask questions um, to the girl because they just want her to reply. And so getting across what you are about, what you do and how that's exciting and fun and you're very positive and enthusiastic and passionate um and then sometimes with build up you don't even need to ask a question you just send stuff like that she's going to want to share what she's up to or she may ask you more questions about the things you've talked about so that's great so this can go on and then the date feeler is um where you're not asking her out straight away but you are um building a little bit of tension with um a suggestive date feeler so it'd be something like uh, my favorite one that I used to use all the time. So um, are you a beer, wine, or cocktail kind of lady? That's something yeah. that I would always yeah. send. Funny, funny enough, um, that's actually also what, what I use, except minus uh, the beer title in there. So I'll just say to someone, are you a wine or a cocktail lady? Uh, yeah. I, I try and avoid beer simply because, like, for me, and this sounds quite embarrassing, but I actually get the hiccups when I have, like, any fizzy <laughs> drinks. So okay. I so just to avoid the embarrassment of like if she says like yeah let's go to a pub and and have a beer and then I'll go like damn okay that means I'm gonna have to have a beer um then um yeah I just try and avoid that completely so I I for me I always just sort of stick with the wine and the cocktail yeah. at least well, I know you're, you're I'm, a classy I'm gen. I'd like to think so you know I'd yeah, I'd like to exactly. think so um uh, I unfortunately I've always been one of those people who just can't handle having like beer after beer. Um, I'm the one who is probably still only halfway through their first pint whilst everyone else is on their fourth or fifth. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it avoids, uh, any, any level of embarrassment on, uh, on my end, but, but yeah, no, I, I like, I like that kind of, um, date feeler. I, I can certainly relate to it. Yeah. It, it builds, it builds tension and, you know, with, with texting, you know, at any point either party could drop off. Mm. And so by just taking your time step by step, um, I mean, a, a, a Gen Z phrase is 
breadcrumbing to keep people interested, but we are, you know, breadcrumbing to actually go and get a date and not mess people around. Uh, but it is, it is just a bit suggestive, you know, kind of, oh, maybe a date's coming, maybe he's going to ask me out, maybe he's not. That's the purpose of this. Um, and then if she replies with something positive or, yeah, I'm into coffee or I'm into wine, um, then great. And then we're moving up to step four and five to, to book in for the date. Now, if she doesn't reply to one of your messages or it's a couple of days and she hasn't replied, then like snakes and ladders, you slide all the way back down to step two. Okay. Um, and when that happens, um, again, a lot of guys will just stop um, and just give up. And what I always say is the texting ladder is always worth one more climb. So generally, you try and go up it twice if you can. So you would wait a couple of days um, and then you would start going up. But this time when you're going up again, texting ladder, um, you would try and do something different. So in your build up message, you would send maybe a, a cool picture um, of you in the city center or some, I don't know, say you made your own lunch and it looked really presentable, just anything, just or, or an audio message, do something different. Mm. Um, you'll be surprised at how many times women will be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I forgot to text you back. Like, um, and then, you know, you're off and running. Um, and this actually happened with a client of mine when I was sat in the pub with him. Um, and, and it was an absolute innocent mistake. And within 15 minutes of us in the pub, his second climb up the texting ladder was done within 15 minutes and he was yeah. booked in to see her the next day. So that, that is the power of it. Um, but I think if you're on your second climb and then it falls over again, then I would just leave it and I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother, um, carrying on. Um, another bit of advice, I would always archive messages, um, and I would not delete phone numbers or contacts I get. I know for some guys who are really into cold approach, that's like their practice that they do. I would never do that. Um, because you just don't know when people are going to reach out again. And you were saying about stories and stuff. I've had it where, um, you know, women have reached out nine months later, mm. a year later, 18 months later. That's, but, but I mean, I was using cold approach. So I suppose I was kind of remembered in a, in a positive sense most of the time. Um, but I would never delete numbers because you never know if, when something, you know, for example, something could be going on in their life right now and, and it's not the right time for them to date or they may have suffered a bereavement or they may be studying really hard or they may be interested in someone else. And so um, you rolling off after you've had a few climbs up the texting ladder shows that you're not needy, you're not harassing, you're not chasing, you've not blocked her, which means you've not been reactive and being sulky. Mm. Um I just archive and the amount of times that I've just been, I don't know, on the tube in London or, and I, and, and when they message you and ping you after however long it is, you obviously get the name, the details about them and the entire texting history there as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's an interesting point though, for, for guys to remember is that these women are still have their own lives going on and you kind of have to be somewhat sympathetic to them that you just don't know what is happening in their life and that there could be a very justifiable reason as to why they aren't texting you back sooner than than later um and as well you don't know how sociable someone is um as much as uh you might want someone to text you back within like five ten minutes she could be in a class she could be at work she could be out with friends she could be in the cinema. She could even be on like another <laughs> yeah. date or something. Yeah. Uh, and that you just have to uh, kind of be be patient um, with it as well. Uh, so what would you say is like some of the typical um, uh, errors that that guys make in like those first uh, initial steps? Just as they're, they've so again, they've got the number. Um, but yeah, what 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 tends to be the the first sort of errors that you tend to see with people? Yeah, I mean the the big one I actually did it's my most recent YouTube video, funnily enough, is um is writing too much. It's it's writing too much and being over invested. Um and they're like 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 we said at the start, they they're just writing their life story or they they're just too keen. So they're saying things like, you know, oh to the girl, you know, oh I'm 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 I really like your Instagram profile. I just found you on there and oh I really like the dress you're wearing and um oh you said you're going out with your friends, like, yeah, what are you doing? Um, and it's just like these massive blocks of, of text in the bubbles, um, often multiple messages without any reply. 
And it's just it's just not good because it just it shows that you're a bit needy. You've not got much going on. She is the center of your attention. Um, it would not appear you're working towards anything like a date. Um, and if you are, you're taking a lot of messages to get there. And you're not a mystery. You're not you're not of intrigue. Um, and she's got you right where she wants you, and and that's kind of not fun. So it's like you're you're kind of there, the dependable floor mat. Um, you know, you risk being put into the friend zone. Um, and so that's one thing is the first two fixes is, yeah, massively cut down your texting, focus on getting a date um, and just follow the texting ladder, basically. So what, what kind of things then would you would you advise uh, guys to consider when they are uh, texting? So you kind of said there about like making sure that they aren't uh, sending too long of a message. Uh, is there also a danger for guys where they can overshare stuff, especially on that second phase when they're trying to like build up uh, the rapport, I suppose, through texting someone? Uh, and you mentioned um, uh, about like sending photos of of like maybe like something that you're eating or just showing that, you know, you've got a social life and stuff. Uh, is there ever a point that guys can kind of like overdo it uh, with that as well? Yeah, again, just just doing too much of, of all of those things um, without getting much investment back. As I've said, they're not really working towards a date. Um, they, they're just trying to perform or they always feel they need to ask a question to get a reply. And um, one of the first chapters in the book is easy things you can do to fix um, your texting. So once you've got the texting ladder down, just lots of little small changes um, you can make, yeah, such as not asking questions. Um, yeah, just just basically not not writing too much, um, and like you say, oversharing with multiple pictures and images and all of this in in one go is 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 generally not is not not too good at all. So, um, yeah, I think guys very much need to be aware of that. And the goal is to get a date in as few messages as possible, um, and that's that's really what the name of the game is. Going back to uh, the texting ladder. Um, so the first phase was, or the first step was essentially um, uh, sending just a, a really simple, straightforward message. Um, when guys are doing that, do you actually recommend that they talk about something that happened in the interaction, or is it just very simple of like uh, like messaging uh, in a sense of like just making sure that the girl remembers uh, who they are? Uh, no, I don't. I don't advocate that um, at all um, because it's it's just it's just again it's it's a little needy and it's what a lot of guys do with the you know oh you know do you remember me um, you know I met you at the salsa class you know in the in the purple hat and the waistcoat and the big shoes um, so no no I don't um, I think if it, if you've done things right then she will remember you and um, as it's only a few hours since just sending something very minimalistic it's that feeler. Um, for investment and you're just seeding for a reply um, if at all I mean if she doesn't reply to the opener then it's really not good at all mm. um, but um, yeah that's it's, it's just keep it very very minimalistic yeah and what do you advise to guys uh, to do um, uh, if let's say you've, you've they've sent the text and they haven't heard a response for a little while do you do, uh, is it best then that they should just sort of read the situation for what it is that the girl's probably not interested if she's not responded? Um, or do you suggest that maybe they send like a sort of second ping message or or something of the like? Because uh, I can definitely think of, I, I know a few guys that I've met uh, or, or a lot of guys I've met over the years where it, they almost kind of think like, well, they won't take no for an answer so they'll they'll send another a, a, th a second message and then they'll send like a third message as like the final one and even though like you know the messages have clearly been received but they've not maybe been uh, been viewed so maybe like the ticks haven't gone blue if it's on whatsapp or maybe they have gone blue but there's not really been a response uh, but yet she's seen it like two three times um you know i i definitely think that sometimes guys get a little naive uh, when they they send messages so what would you kind of advise the guys who maybe are kind of anxious uh in those first initial steps that they might feel that the interaction went well but they just don't know what to do when it comes to um they've sent that first message but they haven't yet got a response 
Yeah, they, they, they just need to be patient. I think that's that's the key thing. Um, and again, I put all of this in the book in terms of timescales about when when and what you should do. And so um, that first message, you are just going to have to wait, you know, potentially up to a couple of days. Um, obviously, the faster she replies, the better, the more invested she is. And also looking at how much she's writing back is also a very key indicator of her level of interest in you. Um, but yeah, it is just a case of waiting. And then, you know, as per the texting ladder, if you're on your climb up there and then um, she doesn't text you back for a couple of days, then you are sliding back down the snakes and ladders and back to step two, again, wait for a couple of days. And then you're starting that second climb up by doing something slightly different, sending an image or an audio, um, no photos of sausage, please. Um, and then, and then going, going up from, from there. Um, to to work your way up to a date so i think i i do i do sympathize with guys you know uh, apprehension and anxiety about this especially when you really really like um the girl and i think um there's a f- there's a few things obviously just trying to keep yourself occupied by you know doing other things like working or going to the gym or other hobbies seeing your friends that that can help massively get yourself off and away from your phone um but I think also a, a, what what can take years, and certainly I learned this about myself, is even though I might be screaming inside, I can manage my exterior very well. And so, you know, I remember that very well in that even with the experience that I've got, you know, there's there's definitely women that you remember that you, you've got their number and you're like, holy crap, like I really hope I can get her out on a date. And so inside I might be feeling those nerves and apprehension, but externally – following the texting ladder and keeping my texting quite minimalistic and um i'm not overdoing it um and even if you know i get a date booked in then obviously i'm jumping for joy in the living room but she's not going to see that so yeah we're during the in fact uh almost going going a few steps back and to the actual interaction itself um do you tend to try and solidify um anything about going on a date uh with the girl during the interaction because I'm wondering then if I, I mean, I'm sure it's probably in the book, so you, you'll tell me. But I'm wondering then, do you find that uh, that that also helps to solidify the date when you're texting to in that build up phase and then doing the date feeler? Uh, because you, you've kind of already like pre-installed this idea that we're going to go on the date, we're going to potentially go for like the wine cocktail or 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 beer thing. And then you're you're kind of like bringing that up again in the text, which just kind of reinforces the idea. So it's not so much a surprise for her, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I definitely do that in all my interactions face to face. So um, I wouldn't really set a date or be too specific, but I would be saying something like, um, well, my famous thing that I always used to say, another time, let's go for a drink. Yeah. Or another another time, let's let's go to the bar or next week let's head out for a drink it's it's just a flat statement i'm not actually asking a question um it's just a statement that i'm making and i go quiet and then if she's interested she'll be like yep yeah, sure or no or i've got a boyfriend or i'm not interested or something like that but um generally they would be like yep yeah, okay that sounds good and then i'm moving straight on to um whatsapp because you know i've approached for a reason because i'm attracted to a being direct having that you know organic conversation and then um, and there's conversation as a means to an end. Want to go on a date? Need a phone number? Let's get that done. Send a message there and then, just to make sure the phone number works. Like, hey, um, is important, especially with WhatsApp. Um, I've got two SIM cards in my phone, like a drug dealer. So um, <laughs> you need to get the area codes right. Um, when you're a real pro, you start to learn the area codes of all the countries, which I suppose is a bit sad. But um, <laughs> you do you do that, so you get that done, and then making sure that the message is correct. It is very much a beginner's problem I've seen, uh, and it happened to one of my clients actually in Sydney. Um, entered the phone number wrong, right? That that is yeah, and that is that is crushing. But it it's important that it happens in a way because they need to learn the lesson, and especially with a girl they really want to go out with and see again. Yeah. You either get the the digits wrong, or you've got the area code wrong, or something's not worked, and you need to get that right, and then text them there and then you know sms or whatsapp hey i have trouble anything like that just to make sure that that it that it works and you've got that that proven route with your comms um so that's then, something yeah, then just... worth worth testing then uh in the interaction at least before you go that you've got the phone number uh correct i mean i guess at least with the area code if you've got an idea of 
you know where that that girl is from so let's say you know she's from spain and that they've got a particular area code but you've entered it wrong in your phone at least you can almost attempt through a process of trial and elimination to maybe see if you can actually put the right area code in there and see if suddenly that that whatsapp um, no profile picture suddenly turns into this like glowing uh, picture <laughs> of her yes. and you're like yes yes I think that actually once happened to me like like once or twice over the years where I, it was my own fault that I um, uh, I didn't enter it correctly or I had entered the, the phone number but without the area code um, because I'd simply forgotten to ask for it but just through chance that when she said, oh, she was from this place in America, I was then able to go, okay, well, it would only maybe be these so many area codes. And then I tried it. And I think I got very fortunate that then her picture appeared. And I was like, that that was the person that I spoke to. Yeah. So, you know, rather than some like 80 year old woman who, who pops up instead. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, but I can, I can absolutely get the, uh, the mistake and error that that could happen there. Oh yeah, you can, I've, I've saved a lot of numbers for myself. Like I, you know, feel like a bit of a spy, really. Like just the amount of recoveries that I've been able to do, or so even for my clients where the area code's wrong. Um, it's just like right, which country? Just Google it. It's like right, Colombia. You know, plus five five. Um, was that plus five? Was that? Uh, I can't remember what Brazil is. Brazil's one of those ones as well. And then also the other one is like, yeah, they've entered one too many digits or you know, a nine was a six and you just end up playing around with it just to get it right. So there's quite a lot you can do. The, the, the other point as well of um, exchanging uh, a message there, and, and it might sound a bit creepy, but it's it's not. If you if you watch, say, my cold approach videos or, or someone else's it, where they're doing this, it, it, it doesn't feel like you're holding them there to make sure it works. It, it can be done very relaxed. You know, you've just got your phone out and you're chatting away. And if it's taking a little bit of time, you can talk about something else while it's all going through. Mm. The other advantage with with doing a message there and then is certainly in my later years um, when I was approaching, you then go and leave part ways. And sometimes within minutes, she starts texting you. She's the one actually messaging you. And you're mm -hmm. like, hang on, I saw her five minutes ago. She's probably three blocks away. And the texting has already begun. And actually, uh, there's an example in the book because there's a lot of screenshots in the book where um, that happened. And I ended up going all the way up the texting ladder and booking in for a day 20 minutes after an interaction. And we were wow. both still in the city. Yeah, but within different areas, maybe, I don't know, 500 meters away or something like that. I don't know, but um, it just kind of went wild over message. So that's also why it's important because you'll be surprised um how how that can happen and and some of my clients have actually arranged dates for uh, several hours later so the girl and the guy the client they don't actually go home like they're out with me or the girl carries on with her shopping and then the texting is going on um minutes after the interaction and then up the texting ladder I get a date booked in I'll see you in two hours and then, and then, and then that's it so right yeah so it, actually it's then it's it's so it's good then really for any guys who are interested in in certainly checking out the book or the texting ladder that actually a, a great takeaway from it is that the more invested and interested she is in you from the cold approach interaction that you've had then actually the faster you can go up that ladder um by the sounds absolutely. of it wow yeah, I mean, absolutely. yeah no that is interesting I suppose then another question um, in regards to like the the second step with the build up, um, what's some of the best um, sort of like uh, texts or, or or videos or voice notes that guy or pictures even well, that guys can uh, certainly share um, that can really give them brownie points to carrying on further up that step? Because I'd imagine that like with what we said before that there can be some things that might be an overshare. Um, and then there might be just some things that that aren't actually going to be cool or beneficial for the guy. Like if he's taking a picture of it, the food that he's eating, um, I mean, maybe for some women that that will work, but then there might be others that they might go like, why is he sending me a picture of his lunch? So um, yeah, what what are potentially the do's and don'ts with 
with sending on that second step? Yeah, I mean, anything that's kind of a subtle demonstration of high value. So, I mean, um, you know, most of us are not professional photographers, but the cameras on our phones are actually really good. And so if you have got a really cracking shot of, um, you know, a beach, I I used to live in a, a beach town and some of the sunsets across the bay there were absolutely fantastic. So I got photos of that. Um, for example, if, if you're a guy who's doing quite well in the corporate world, you know, if there was a photo of you on a stage giving a speech um, or you met a celebrity quite recently or someone that you really like, like a Formula One driver or a sports person um, or um, a big a big success, like you're getting a certificate or do you, anything anything like that, or, or you're off to play football and there's just a picture of the pitch and a football there. Um, anything that's interesting, it just adds quite a lot of color to conversations because a lot of guys, as we've said, they're just writing like actual texts, a lot of them, and it's all about the girl and chasing. And I think if you can throw anything in about you, um, you know, not, you know, keys of a Ferrari, look what I bought, haha, because you are basically saying I'm super rich. Don't really want to blase it that much, but just, um, just really cool, interesting things. And and the great thing is, um, is we've all got those photos on our phone, uh, maybe just even just one or two. You can reuse them. And even if they're weeks or months old, you can reuse them and just say that this happened today. It's a little white lie, but it's it's fine. You know, yeah. some, but some I, places. But I suppose it's, so- it's still giving uh, 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 an, some insight into your reality. I mean, if it's still something that's part of your lifestyle, but maybe not literally on that day. In that I suppose, moment, yeah. yeah. So I, I can I can definitely see that. Like there is a, a absolutely the the white uh, white light element there. But if it's still something that's just ingrained into your um into your lifestyle, like if you're maybe someone who does travel a lot, um, then I mean you know showing a picture like like I've just come back from Lisbon, um, me showing a picture of me in Lisbon when clearly I've just met someone who's who's not in Lisbon. We're we're back in London. Then of course, yeah, it it wouldn't make sense to show them a photo and say like, look where I am right now. Um, but I, I absolutely, I can I can get that the the right kind of photos can certainly go a long way. Um, uh, with letting someone know, look, this is what I do. This is who I am. These are my interests and and hobbies and and whatnot as well. Um, and do you find that that can also um uh help to lead into uh the the date feeler or or going on on a date by by showing off those particular things yeah massively i mean just those subtle hints of um you know the demonstration of high value or just just that you've got a life and that you've got stuff going on with or without her i mean this is very early days of dating you know you've met her and now you're texting for the first time so I think it it does show that you, you know, are the man about town. You know, you've you've got lots of things going on. You're happy, secure, entertained. If this conversation doesn't go anywhere, you clearly got a lot going on, so it doesn't really matter. You're not going to react in a negative way. So there's a lot of other subtle communication cues going on um, by 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 doing stuff like that. And again, you don't need to do it for every message. Just something like that. Um, has quite an impact and then from there there'd be a few messages about that for build up and then you know naturally transitioning to uh, to the date feeler and then date request right can you uh give me maybe uh an example of of what uh, a date feeler would be um because i i find i think i mean definitely as you get to the later steps of the um the texting ladder obviously i think that's where it probably gets really interesting because you're then probably starting to think about uh where you're going to go on the day what the logistics are probably going to be uh setting the time and and stuff and maybe even the tone of the date as well uh like i think i've known i think i remember there was a coach uh, a coach or two in the past where they've even like suggested uh depending on how fancy the date location was or or the bar or restaurant they may even say look um you know can you uh, make sure to wear a dress or make sure to wear something stylish to to show off? Um, so yeah, can you can you just walk me through what what the uh, the date feeler is and maybe just kind of give an example with that? Yeah, I mean it's just building um, intrigue, anticipation, bit of tension that a date is coming, but you're not actually asking her out. So 
you know, the thing that I would always say is, you know, are you a beer, wine or cocktail kind of lady? Um, that's that's what I would say. And I, my dates were always just bars, bars and drinks. I wasn't doing anything other than that. Um, but, you know, there's there's other examples. If you're more of a daytime person or you don't drink, you know, are you into tea, coffee or smoothies? That would be another one. Um, or, you know, if you're more into, like you say, your, your venues, you could say something, you know, like, how are you with dive bars? Um, or, you know, how are you with a rooftop bar on the 46th floor? Or, and ju- just leaving it a bit open like that, I think, yeah. just starts to set I like that, that scene. I, I do like that. There, there is, there, that does add um, I, certainly intrigue, but I think almost a level of mystery to it as mm. well, because then... Uh, I think for me personally, if someone had said to me like, like, yeah, how are you with like the 65th floor of a, of a, of a rooftop hotel or something? I'd be like thinking like where, what places in London could, could they be possibly suggesting that we could go for a, for a a drink or food or whatever? So I, I, I actually, I quite like that, that level of curiosity there. That's not something that even I've actually consider it's almost like a step up actually from just saying that you know you're a wine or a cocktail lady it's like it, it just adds almost um uh, a 3d effect to it like besides what you want to drink what the location could potentially uh, mm. be with that as well yeah i mean and there's a, i mean some bars you know that do well as a bar they'll set themselves apart so you know have you have you ever had a drink called a white rabbit before um or have you ever been to a speakeasy or have you ever been to a bar that only has 10 people on the guest list you, and you're keeping it quite short and simple but it, it is creating that intrigue um and and like you say it starts to get their mind thinking and running about oh you know this this guy has got some ideas again mm-hmm. he's taking the lead which again is attractive um he's got an idea in his head it sounds a bit different to other guys you know it's, it's there's a lot of positives with with uh with the date feeler yeah, it, it kind of plays on the fantasy as well of of where the the romance could lead, or at least that's the impression that I I get from from those statements. Yeah, you know, definitely not McDonald's or behind the dumpster bins. <laughs> yeah, which are incredibly romantic uh, as, as well. <laughs> um, no, no, fascinating. So I, I suppose my my kind of my last question before we we do get get near to wrapping up is what would you say are key things that guys need to be bearing in mind when they are uh, texting women um, that they want to get out on dates? What are just sort of the very simple things that they need to remember um, that are essentially going to prevent them from shooting themselves in the foot and and ruining the situation? Sure. Well, I mean, when when they're texting, are they working towards a date? I mean, that's that is the purpose of texting. It is written in bold in the book. Um, you know, ask yourself if you are texting a woman, are you working your way towards a date, or are you just texting her because you're texting her, or you're chatting about the latest color of highlights that are in her hair? Mm. Then that's probably not a good place to be. So you need to be working your way towards a date. Um, keeping things short, simple, not asking too many questions. Follow the texting ladder, of course. Um, but it, be be patient. That's another one. Don't write too much, um, and um, yeah, just have that eye on the prize, which is a date, and and that's it. Um, and uh, if she doesn't reply, wait a couple of days, and then have another go at the texting ladder. And then if that doesn't happen, then I would I would just drop it. Um, it's it's funny really because texting is it is simple when you know what you're doing. But it, it can be complex as well. And I think, again, the reason that I wrote the book is not just to guide guys, but also to deal with problems that can happen along the yeah. way because it, it sometimes isn't simple, especially with really attractive women. Yeah, and I would imagine as well, like depending on uh, the women's nationality or where she's culturally from, what her background is, you probably also adapt uh, your conversations to these different women uh, so like a, how you talk to an American woman might be very different to how you talk to a Brazilian woman um, or someone from Europe as well. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in those cases, if their English is really crap, um, I'm I'm keeping the texting even simpler. I'm not being cheeky or flirty or trying to do anything too creative. Um, you know, if they're really, really attractive, I'll keep the texting really tightly down to the minimum because I don't want to make any mistakes that could cause trouble um and just get just get get that date because that's that's really where you want to get to 
that's that's where the action is that's that's the business end of dating is going on a date so you want to get there and not not be lost in texting uh, I suppose actually just one last question whilst I'm I'm thinking about it with with women um who may be a bit more international and uh English isn't their first language um do you tend to advise uh your clients uh to use like Google Translate in uh their text messages and then you're actually uh doing like you're like using this uh interpreter as the uh the middleman between uh, arranging yeah. a date yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, if, if, only if the, in, they don't speak any English. And so when I would go overseas, uh, Brazil being a great example, um, lots of fun there. Um, in, in some cases, no English is spoken whatsoever. And so I would be using Google Translate, English to Portuguese, but um, it, it, I would just keep my texting really, really simple because things are lost in translation. Yeah. Um, and and I would I would make my simple texting very, well, simple and overt you know, let's go to a bar at 6 p.m. I mean, a translator isn't going to get that wrong. If you start going a bit more creative, then things can be lost um, in, in translation. And so I wouldn't really take any risks. Being played mean not what you think it does. Mm. Um, and then, of course, so quite bizarre, again, Brazil, always a favorite of mine, you know, even, even on a date, they don't speak English, but you can use Google Translate. I mean, but using the um, the uh, the audio, you hold yeah, it the down, voice speak. Yeah, the version of it. Yeah. speak let go and then it just translates most western women would never tolerate that but i've done many dates like that quite strange but i'm just thinking oh they're going to sack me off any minute I'm more than happy to stay in chat with through the phone on google translate i've seen mental but that's why i love brazil yeah but i in, even we even saying that i always think uh like these women actually uh uh are very sympathetic to the situation and and it it just adds a level of romance to it as well that you're trying your hardest to uh to impress them or to actually have a conversation with them in the on a date you've gone as far as at least you know cold approaching them uh getting the phone number and yes there is a a lost in translation moment going uh playing out but you're still making it quite fun and interesting where even for her, she'll probably go back to her friends and say, look, uh, we, I went on a date with this English guy and uh, he didn't speak a word of, of Portuguese, but we had this this uh, really fun conversation on, on Google Translate and there were also words that weren't said correctly and he called me a banana or something. Like, you know, just <laughs> just just something like, like really good. It just makes so for, I think, a really, really good funny story um uh, at least on on the date with that but absolutely i can get um uh when it comes to the texting side especially with people who don't speak english there really is no point over complicating it and perhaps then actually it's even more important to just get straight to the point with the date in case google translate or something does get miscommunicated in the texting and then she'll look at it and go like yeah maybe it's not worth the 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 trial uh the the drama or the trouble to to go on a date with someone like that so no very 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 interesting stuff and and i think definitely we'll have to have uh another conversation about the texting stuff in on on another time because i think i'd be fascinating to hear um especially areas around like the voice notes and videos and pictures side of things uh because i'm someone who loves sending people voice notes i find that uh, i think just so much easier to articulate myself when I am texting people. Um, and sometimes that's hit or miss with women. Um, and um, But usually then with women who do voice note me back, it, it just I think it just tends to work out like 10 times yeah. better at least for me. So I think definitely another occasion, I'd love to be able to talk to you um, about those topics. But for now, being able to talk about those, um, those first few steps with the texting book has been absolutely fascinating. I think there's been a couple of things there that even i've uh, uh learned especially with the location thing of like with the rooftop bar stuff i quite like that so just to wrap up uh david um tell guys how they can find out more about you and this book if they are interested in trying to just sort of step up uh no pun intended there their um their texting ladder game um and uh and hopefully it will make a difference for their uh their their texts and getting on dates as well 
Sure. Um, well, yeah, there's um, a link down below for the texting book. Uh, so me and Dan are doing a collaboration. So for the next seven days from the video going out, um, there'll be 10% off um, off the price. And it is, um, yeah, the price of two beers. So it's about, it's 27 Australian dollars. $27 is about 13, 14 pound. Um, so two premium beers in London. Um, and yeah, but it'll be 10% off of that. So um, yeah, click the link below and that will get you um, a copy of the ebook. In fact, I can just uh, maybe share screen. Yeah, just sure. to show the front. Do I need to give cover. you permission. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, that should work now for you. Okay. So if I share and then do that and that. Okay. okay. Brilliant. That's how that works. Um, so, yeah, this is the front cover. So, this is the, yeah, the ebook version. Um, you know, got a picture of the wife on the front as well, so uh, ah. she uh, she helps me. So uh, yeah, good honor. Um, but yeah, this is the ebook. So again, just click the link below, and you can uh, you can buy it. You can also get it in print version as well, a print book. Um, slightly more money and does print and uh, get posted to most countries around the world. And um, but yeah, a bit more money. Um, there'll be a link below for that. I can't. We can't do a discount on that. It's just the way that the system works. But yeah, um, well, the ebook works. Yeah, I, I jump just jumping in there. I mean, I must admit, I like the idea of of it being as an ebook because then it means that guys can actually look at it on the go. So if they yes. have just got a phone number after doing a cold approach, then they can look at it and go, right, what do I need to do as the first step, or what's some examples that I can do, and and then just carrying on through the ladder that way, at least whilst they're on the go. Yeah, correct. And um, yeah, in my opinion, the ebook is is better because, you know, it works for um, your phone for Android. Here we have the, the texting ladder. Um, yeah, it works for Android, uh, Google Play Books, and also iPhone, so iBooks. Um, so yeah, it, I, one of my clients actually managed to get it work on their Kindle. So if that is you um, and you want to get it on your Kindle, then email me. Um and uh, yeah, David Thorpe at davidthorpedating.com and I can help you get that set up. But yeah, basically it's the ebook is better as well because you can also uh, copy and paste messages like this uh, with, you know, on or straight off your phone into your text message conversations and then just change wow. a little bit. So yeah, that's quite easy. So you can just flick between the book and say what's up on your phone. So yeah, um, so, yeah so that's, so that's, that's it. Um, yeah, if you're in Sydney, Australia, I'm doing free approaching coaching as well. If you would like to come out with me, um, if you want to know more about that, then that's on YouTube. Um, and that's about it. I also highly recommend working with Dan. If you're in London, top bloke, the real deal. Um, yeah, good morals. I, I like you and I think other men should work with you as well. Yeah, no, no, fantastic. And, and I think for me, one of the, the things that I love about this book, and I know you said this to me sort of like off off recording, but you've you've done like thousands upon thousands of approaches. And these are, uh, this is like a, a, a culmination. I think that's the right word, culmination of all of your knowledge and experience put together into this, this book. And that's actually, in fact, I also didn't uh, know that you had these copy and paste uh messages so i mean even then you've simplified it so much for guys that if they are struggling with their own creativity to think of something themselves then they can just use something from this book and uh and and that should hopefully end up getting them the results and uh and until they can at least learn how to create their own interpretation of your messages and say things in their own way too yes yeah no it's it has been great actually and i've it's been nice to receive a lot of positive feedback about the book, even years afterwards, and guys saying it's helped them, and um, yeah, just they've they've learned so much, or they've been able to get dates, and um, that's that's just fantastic. You know, that's 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 what it's about. So um, yeah, no, it's been been a good four years with the book so far, and, and this is the second edition now. So I, I improved it last year um, with more chapters and stuff. So um, yeah, it's good, and uh, yeah, get your ten percent discount through through me or Dan. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. Well, again, David, thank you so much for your time. And I know we've kind of gone a little bit over as well. So, I mean, I really do appreciate uh, every bit of time that you've given me because I just know this is going to be stuff that will help guys, especially if they're anxious with sending those texts or they just 
uh, struggle to understand like that every step of the way and what they need to do or, you know, has things been ruined? Have they have, have things been screwed up and they don't think it's going to work out? So I think this is going to just give guys so much advice and, and a lot of context as well in just how to appropriately uh, text. And the sooner guys, I think, can learn how to do this, um, then the easier and less stressful the rest of the process is if they know that they can meet someone off of the street or or wherever, and then they can have that comfort in knowing, look, I know how to handle texting her and I should hopefully uh, touch would be able to get her out on a date. So um, yeah, again, thank you so much again for your time and, uh, and guys absolutely check out the link in the description. As David said, for a period of time, we're going to be doing a discount on the book. So do check it out. Uh, I think it's a, a great tool to have, uh, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so have a look, give it a read, give it a chance as well. Um, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, I mean, I've certainly known um, guys over the years who have used it because uh, I was helping David at the launch four years ago for this book. And I know just how successful it was. Uh, which is definitely one of the reasons why I wanted to go to David to to help me out with this uh, this video and certainly share some of his experience and expertise. And even after another four years going by, after the book was completed, or at least that first edition, for him to be able to add even more unique stuff to it is uh, is brilliant. And I can only assume as well, uh, if you ever do end up making further editions, then guys will be able to easily get hold of that too, right? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. No, brilliant. Okay. Well, David, thank you so much. I will let you go. Uh, I'm sure it's probably uh, quite late there now in Australia and, and whether or not you've had dinner or not. I'm, I'm, uh, I'd hate to think that the missus, I've, I've kept you from your missus with that. Um, but, but no, Absolutely. honestly, thank, thank you so much again. I will let you go. Um, and, uh, and guys, uh, as usual, I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy, and uh, certainly look forward to more interviews, hopefully with David again in future and uh, certainly more topics that I will cover too. So if you do have any requests for stuff, do let me know and I will look forward to trying my very best to get whichever expert or whichever topics I can possible uh, on this channel to help you out with your anxiety. So thanks very much for watching.